Uh, Arthur, obviously with, with trading uh, Matt Ryan, you took on a really big uh, dead money hit, which was caused by restructuring his contract so many times in the past. Um, in retrospect, any regrets in allowing the previous front office to take that tack, especially after their, their job security had become, you know, kind of shaky? No, Michael, I, I would say this. First of all, all the extensions that we did and renegotiations we did with Matt, when they were, that, was a, uh, that was a team decision. Um, it was really driven by the coach, the general manager. I obviously was aware of it, but I mean, I'm not, I don't get involved in those level of details in terms of restructuring, but um, it was done, you know, to keep Matt and to, um, to give us at the time um, some flexibility with the, you know, the salary cap. But um, as you all understand, when you, um, you think of it kind of as a credit card, if you will, at some point, you do have to pay the bank, and uh, you can restructure your, your debt, your personal debt, or business debt as often as you want. But at some point, there is a day of reckoning. And you know, Matt, um, we have we absolutely have love for him completely, both personally as well as professionally. We can't we never thank him enough for the 14 years he gave Atlanta and um, missed only three games in 14 years, and you know, six playoffs and, you know, a couple of NFC championship uh, opportunities and Super Bowl. So, you know, I mean, but Matt is, you know, going to be 37 in May. And um, Tom Brady may become the new norm, but, you know, not many quarterbacks are playing to 45 years old. Um, so, you know, we felt in terms of getting ready for the future and um, it was the right decision to make. I mean, we Matt this year was probably about 20%, 20, 23 to 25% of our cap this year. And next year, even with the cap going up dramatically, it would be you know, 20% or above it. And um, there's been no quarterback in the last 20 years who's played in the Super Bowl. whose cap has been more than 12% of their total team's cap, the exception of one that was Peyton Manning. And Peyton was only 7, 17% in 2009. So, you know, it does take, um other players to win it's not like golf you know you have to have a team around you you got to have an offensive line that's going to keep you standing standing vertical as opposed to the horizontal you got to have receivers you got to have running back you got to have you got to have a defense that that can stay on you know can 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 keep and compete and so instead of turning the ball back over immediately so um you know i think there are a lot of factors that came into play but this coming year will be uh, probably in the top two or three teams in the league in terms of being in an un under cap position, which will give us the opportunity to keep our own, which is really important. I feel real bad about losing, you know, Devondre Campbell a couple of years ago. We lost Foyer this year, who was the top tackler in the NFL. And it's like having children at a certain age you, where you just can't keep them. But that's a, that's a painful thing. So we want to be able to keep our own. We want to be able to be more active in free agency. And, and uh, we'll be able to do that going forward. But we have nothing but personal love and affection and respect for Matt. And I'm sure for Matt in the last you know, year or two of his playing career, however long it is, he's going to play well for Indianapolis. Uh, they have a good roster. They have an excellent coach. Uh, they have a good owner. So I'm, you know, I'm happy for him. Mike, you're still muted. My second question is a month before you traded, Matt, you'd said that organization and wide, you'd always been thinking about a succession plan. Uh, now he's gone and I don't see much evidence of a succession plan. So could you please tell me what is that plan? What are you going to do? Well, you know, we, we, we signed a, uh, we already signed a very good quarterback, uh, Marcus Mariota, who was the second pick in the, in the draft, uh, first round and played for Tennessee for five years and started for the, the better part of four years for them. And he had, you know, he had a really good record there. Now, at the end, they had a, had a transition, uh, and our coach was involved in that. So, Coach Smith knows, uh, he knows Marcus well, personally, knows him professionally, knows how he can fit into his system. Um, so, you know, I'm very, very optimistic about that. Um, we certainly have to look for a backup for him. He's got a history of, you know, being injured on occasion, and that's, that's always a concern. Uh, you want to have a backup quarterback that you can win with. Uh, maybe it'll be Philippe Frank, Philippe Franks, or maybe it'll be somebody that will pick up on uh, free agency, or maybe somebody will draft. But um, so I feel like we're in a good place from that perspective. 
and uh, and we'll go from there. So I, I think all the evidence is there that we are going to make a successful transition. I have no reason to think we're not going to. Thank you. Really, just to understand, Mike, we're at a point, given Matt's age, given his contract, given our salary cap situation, that the healthiest thing for the franchise long term for the next 15 years, not necessarily maybe for the next year, the next 15 years, is that we have to move on so we can actually build a successful franchise in, a, in not just one position, but in multiple positions. Michael Rothstein. Hi, Arthur. Um, first question is about Sean Watson in that, how much research did you do into the 22 civil cases brought against him in Texas? Well, when we when we chatted with him, uh, the, the, the major criminal case had been dropped uh, by the grand jury. They looked at all the evidence in a six hour period of time and they were not convinced those in a criminal standpoint. A, a, after we spoke with him, the second case was dropped as well. In terms of the civil cases, um, we investigated enough, which is on a very preliminary basis, to feel comfortable that we could at least talk to Deshaun. That was a requirement. And uh, you know whether or not it would have gone further than that, I really don't know. I would say this to you, if it did go further than that, from our perspective, uh, we would have done a lot more work. But we did some work. We did enough. We matched the level of, of investigation and time we put into it against you know, an hour and 50-minute phone call. And that that was you know that was the extent of it. But we felt comfortable at that point to at least at least have a conversation with them. Kind of following up on that, this is a I guess two part two parts based off of that. Did you read the twenty two? Did you read the twenty two complaints at all, or talk to Tony Busby or anybody in his office? And sec and the second part of that, with the core values you have in your company, why did you feel comfortable going down this road, even pursuing him? considering uh the 22 case civil cases against him well they are they are cases um which means they're not decided so we didn't know and i don't think you you know and we don't know you know whether allegations are all true or not true or whatever i mean deshaun is taking the position he's innocent i mean that, that's you know time will only tell that uh, but i think for from our perspective at least to have the conversation with him uh and his his agent and what have you i thought that was that seemed to be be reasonable at that point. Um, where it would have gone from there, I really don't know. Uh, we would not have compromised, you know, who we are and what we are for sure. But there would have been a lot more work done. So I think to engage in the conversation was fine. Uh, we did some investigation. I know we spoke to some attorneys. Which ones I don't know, um, but we felt comfortable enough at that point just to, you know, have that you know, to be able to have that conversation. Um, and, you know, the rest is all speculation. Thank you. Zach Klein. Yeah, hey, so, uh, I know the Super Bowl is the only or Super Bowl win is the only box basically, you know, left on in your life on your list. How much patience do you have for uh, uh, Zach? I, I would tell you that, you know, most of our listeners, they know me, know me by you know, reputation or some of them actually. Probably being patient is not the greatest virtue I have. Um, which is okay. I mean, I, I, you know, I certainly uh, want rings. And I want rings. Not when I talk about rings, it's not for me. It's for Atlanta. Um, so, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why you have to plan for, you know, for succession. You got to plan for the future. It's not always about the next twelve months. It's about, you know, can you transition the organization to the next fifteen years and, um, and have another version of Matt Ryan, who's been a blessing. Matt's been a blessing personally, professionally, et cetera. But this is not like checkers. You can't play it till you're 100 years old. And Matt will be 37 in May. Uh, he's been really blessed. He's only missed three games in 14 years. So but we felt, you know, it was appropriate to put ourselves in a position where we could actually build around whoever the quarterback is uh, in the future, which we can't now. I mean, I mentioned a minute ago, we've lost, you know, uh, couple of Pro Bowl players just in the last couple of years that we didn't want to lose. Uh, we did as much as we could, but we don't have a cap space. And when you have one player, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, consuming between 20 to 25 percent of your cap. It's very difficult uh, to build the kind of uh, franchise you want, the kind of team you want, because uh, you have to win 
on offense, you got to win on defense, you got to be able to rush the passer, you got to be able to throw the ball to somebody and catch it. I mean, there's a whole variety of things. All of our fans understand that, in my opinion. Uh, it's not a one one position game. So um, so anyway, I, I you know I feel like we always have to think about not just the transaction of the moment, but are we doing the right thing long term, the best interest of the franchise and the football club, and the best interest of our fans. At the end of the day, this is about, you know, doing the right thing for our fans. They they really, I've said this a number of times, I'm the steward for the team, but I mean, in many ways, the fans are the ones that are really are the owners. Charles Odom? The, uh, the NFL um, this week um, passed a diversity rule, which... Uh, seems to, uh, in, you know, indicate the obvious uh, conclusion that um, a stronger stance was needed to achieve the original intent of the Rooney Rule. Um, do you believe that um, the measures taken this week will will be successful to, in, in achieving that? Yeah, I think. I mean, I, I was on the um, the original uh, committee with um, with Ambassador Rooney, who's you know no longer, no longer with us, Dan Rooney, and. Um, you know, the goal then was to, you know, to uh, create more diversity within the NFL. We certainly had it then in terms of players. We didn't have it then in terms of personnel. We didn't have it then in terms of coaches, et cetera. So I think I look over the last 20 years and, and uh, I see a lot of progress in a lot of areas, certainly at the league office, certainly at the clubs in terms of uh, coordinators, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. I've seen it in terms of general managers. I've seen it in terms of club executives on the business side and on the football side, both people of color and women as well. So there's been a lot of progress been made. The area that we have not made the progress in terms of our, our, our head coaches, and there's a variety of reasons for that, but um, what's not acceptable uh, to us and not acceptable, should be acceptable to our fans, is that when you end up with only three minority head coaches after all these years, when we had as many as seven at one point, and started out and then back down to three now. Uh, that's not where we need to be. So um, the league over the last uh, you know number of months has looked at every aspect of the interviewing process, every aspect of, of uh, getting people ready for interviewing, making sure they have the training, make sure they have the background, make sure that they understand what they're being interviewed for. So there's no confusion about that. All of those things, the league has gone back and re-examined, and I've been part of those committee meetings. And on top of that, now the league just announced today um, an outside, you know, board of advisors, if you will, who have you know, great credentials, will not only help us, you know, you know, give us perspective from the outside. They've all had a variety of reasons of success from an academic standpoint, from a business standpoint, in in uh, in, in be able to create the right kind of culture. So um, I, I feel very confident with the changes that we've made and the accountability that we've created. You know, yesterday was the first time that the league has ever shared. Um, every year they share with us in terms of how our own clubs are doing, but we already know how we're doing because we give them the input for that. But yesterday was the first time that the league shared it all with how do how do we stack up in terms of our performance versus other uh, other teams. So, you know, some areas, uh, the Atlanta Falcons are doing really well. <clears throat> I would tell you this, that uh, commissioner and uh, – and other league personnel have told us that our processes last year, when we hired a new general manager, new head coach, were one of the very best in the NFL. We had person after person who were not hired, felt they were treated fairly, they were listened to, we understood them, we went back for second interviews, we, we gave them an opportunity to talk about their backgrounds and their interests, et cetera. And that when they didn't get the, they didn't get the position, obviously most people didn't. We went back to them and spent time on the phone with them talking about what they really did well during the interview and what they could have done better. Um, so, you know, as a club, I think we're doing really well. But, you know, this is one that we have to have 32 clubs all doing better. And I think there will be more accountability uh, to each other, which is always the best form of accountability. And I think accountability within the league as well in terms of how each club is making progress or if they're not. And if I could uh, follow up on uh, the Deshaun Watson question, um, you you termed your interest as as preliminary, but the, the public perception was it was it was very serious, based upon the presumption that there had to be a trade offer made uh, for you to proceed with that conversation. Um, were you were you concerned about 
um, public um, backlash and especially from your season ticket holders. And even though he did not come to Atlanta, has there been uh, negative um, uh, feedback from from your season ticket holders uh, concerning your interest? Well, I think <clears throat> I give the same answer, Charles, that I did a few minutes ago. I think at the level, um, you know, we had experience with Deshaun. Obviously, he was, he was much younger. He was in our camp for four years. I had a great relationship with Matt. Great relationship with all the players and, and all the staff personnel. Of course, that was a number of years ago when he was in high school. He went through Clemson. Coach Coach Sweeney, who's a, a high culture guy, high cultural leader, was a big supporter and came out of Clemson. I think very clean. What happened after that, I'm not I'm not sure. But um, I think you know we had a, an obligation to uh, felt an obligation that we ought to at least uh, have a conversation with him. Um, you know, we did the right amount of exploring um, to match the an hour and 15 minute discussion we had with him and his team. Um, and where it would have gone from there, I really don't know. But um, um, we, we do know that the criminal charges were dropped. Uh, these other civil allegations are very serious. And I think he's taking them very seriously. And um, what will come from that, I'm not sure. But uh, we certainly um, would have done even more work had we gotten to the point that we were seriously considering the trade.